Good morning, viewers. Welcome to the session devotions for this morning. I guess I've got to be looking at the topic, the plague of pride. The plague of pride under the series plagues and danger in vision. Host my humble self, look at Kia, text, take me book of Proverbs 16, verse 17 to 19. But let's pray before we begin. Heavenly Father, we've come to say thank you for all you've done for us, for your faithfulness in our life, safe. We also got to speak to us and grant us understanding. In Isaiah 9, 8, send a word on Jacob and light the entire Israel. Send a word that light us to our world and grant us grace to accomplish our purpose in life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Topic one more time. The plague of pride. The plague of pride. Under the series, plagues and danger and vision. Host Muhammad Musa Abu Our text taken from the book of Proverbs 16, from verse 17 to 19. I read from verse 17. It said, The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserved his soul. Verse 18 said, Pride. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. In better verse 19, it is to be an humble spirit with a lowly that to divide the poor with the proud. May the Lord bless his word and grant us understanding. In Jesus' name. For that reading, Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 12 to 15 said, Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Least the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Malachi chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3 he said, Now and now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay to heart, to give glory unto thy name, said the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse unto you. I will cause your blessings, ye. I have caused them already because ye do not lay to heart. Why I pray the grace to lay to heart to give God all the praise you receive it this morning in Jesus and verse 3 said, Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of solemn sea, feast, and one shall take you away with it. None of this will be our portion in Jesus' name. After the apostle chapter 12, from verse 21 to 23, alas for that reading said, And upon a set day, Herod, array in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an made an oration unto them. And verse 22, and the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of God and not of man. Verse 23, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. I pray the plague of pride will not catch up with us in Jesus' name. Topic one more time, the plague of pride on that series, plagues and danger and vision. Host my humble self, look at KR, text, take the book of Proverbs 16, from verse 17 to 19, for the reading Deuteronomy 6, 12 to 15, Malachi 2, 1 to 3, actually a positive 12, 21 to 23. Please, at your free time, you can read all of these Bible passages again, and I'm sure you're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Thinking cap. Pride is a parasite that paralyzes great destinies. I take that again. Pride is a parasite that paralyzes great destiny. Think about this. Today we'll look at the topic, the plague of pride, and the teaching series on the plagues and danger in vision. By introduction, let's understand that plague of pride have destroyed so many great destinies. The effect of pride brought down Lucifer from heaven to earth. The same pride brought down King Nebuchadnezzar from the throne to the forest to eat grass for seven years. Beloved, let's know that pride is just a destroyer and a killer. Pride can kill a man's beautiful vision or palace. And on this note, we'll learn about the effect of pride on our divine vision and, of course, the solution to pride. And I pray God will grant us understanding in us to do so in Jesus. In Proverbs 16, verse 18 said, Pride go in before destruction and a haughty spirit before your fall. Daniel chapter 4, 28, 37 said, And this came unto the king Nebuchadnezzar at the end of 12 months. He walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon, the king's park, that's in verse 30. It is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might, by the might of my power, and for the honor of my majesty. And verse 31, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is de divided, as is departed from thee. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, verse 33, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair was grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bed's claws. Number 34. And at the end of the days, I never can have of my eyes upon heaven, and my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High. 
and I praise and honor him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. At the same time, my reason returned, and of course he came back to his palace, said in verse 37, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, I praise and exalt and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. I pray heaven will not abase you by reason of your pride in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 12 to 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou caught down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Verse 13 said, For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sight of the north. I pray you and I will not come down from our glory. By reason of pride in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 12, from verse 7 to 13 said, And there was war in heaven, and Michael and the angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And in verse 8, And prevailed not, neither was there place found any more in heaven for him. And the great dragon was cast down. The old serpent called the devil, the Satan, was the deceiver of the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. I pray, will not be cast down. In Jesus' name. We'll be looking at this subtopic. What are the plagues and danger on our part of visions? What are the plagues and dangers on our part of visions? And we're looking at just one more today. Yesterday we saw the plague of idolatry. Please, I can charge you to reference this teaching series. The plague of idolatry, even on this platform. Now I'm sure you're going to be blessed today. We're looking at the plague of pride. What are the plagues and danger on our part of visions of our part of fulfilling our glorious destiny on this earth simply the plague of pride the plague of what the plague of pride this is the evil of rising shoulders high and feeling like a god within without reference to one's maker by reason of one's achievement or great plans of attainment i think that again this is the evil of raising shoulders high and feeling like a god without reference to one's maker by reasons of one's achievement or great plans of attainment. We saw that in the life of Nebuchadnezzar, how he was reduced to a beast. He went to eat grass for seven years in Daniel chapter 4, from verse 28 down to 37. Also in Deuteronomy chapter 5, from verse 6 down to 9, we see God giving him a commandment said, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee for the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage, thou shalt have no any other God before me. Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, and that is on the earth beneath, and that is beneath the water. Said in verse 9, Thou shalt not bow thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the generation, unto the third and unto the fourth generation that hate me. So each time we live in pride, each time we don't give God all the glory that he deserves. We come under a cause, and that cause last, last, third and fourth generation. But I pray none of this will be our portion in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 16, from verse 17 to 19. Our anchor scripture, we've read that, charging us in verse 18, said, Pride goes before destruction, and in haughty spirit before it falls. It better is it to be humble spirit with lowly than to divide your spoil with the proud of God's cause. Ezekiel chapter 30, from verse 6 down to 8 also. At a leisure time, please, you can read this. He said, in verse 6, said, Thus says the Lord, They also that uphold Egypt shall fail, and the pride of our power shall come down from the tower of Sinai, shall they fall in by the sword, said the Lord. He said, in verse 7, And they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and our cities shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. I pray none of this will be our portion in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, down to 6. At a leisure time, you can read, said in verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, verse 5, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, that bring into captivity every thought of the obedience of Christ. And having, in verse 6, readiness to ravage to revenge all disobedience when obedience is fulfilled so we have to abide the obedience of humility so we don't allow pride
pride to creep into us. And some of all, I'm trying to say we're looking at what are the plagues and dangers in our part of visions. And we're looking at the plague of pride. We said it is the evil of raising shoulders high and feeling like a god without reference to one's maker by reason of one's achievement or great plans of attainment. We can read Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6 to 9. We can read Proverbs chapter 16, 17 to 19. You can read Ezekiel chapter 30, 6 to 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 to 6. This also is the act of worshipping and adoring oneself with exalted words of ego, without respect, without reference, without regard or worship to God, which definitely incurs the wrath of God. I think that again, this also is the act of worshipping and adoring oneself with exalted words of ego, without reference, respect, regard or worship to God which definitely incurs the wrath of God. But I pray we will not come unto God's wrath in Jesus' name. And First Kings chapter 19, from verse 9 down to 19, at a leisure time, you can read talking about the great man of God, Elijah. He was making a pride statement, saying that they have destroyed all the servants of God. He's the only one left. And God said, no, you are not. God said, you are not. He said, turn back. Go and anoint the king. Go and anoint Elisha in your office so god rebuked him he said go and anoint these guys in verse 10 said and he said i have been very jealous for the lord god of hosts he said they have slain all the prophet he said i only i left and they seek me to take my life and the lord said go return to the, the wilderness of damascus and when thou shalt come anoint Hazel to be king over over syria and in verse 16, and Jehu, the son of Nisky, shall be, shall be anointed the king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, that shall anoint in thy room. So God resists the proud, of course, we all know that. In Malachi chapter 2, from verse 1 down to 3, we see the commandment for us that if we will not lay it to hands to give it all the, the glory, he said he will cause our blessings. But I pray the grace to be humble, to give God all the praise for every achievement, for every attainment in your life. Receive it afresh in Jesus. And Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 21 to 23, we read that Herod made an oration, he made a statement, and the people shouted the voice of God, the voice of God. And perhaps the man must have lifted up his two fingers, you know, pumping to the heavens, saying, I want here, and all that. A proud look and a proud talk. And of course, he was smote, once he was smote by the angel of the Lord. And that was how warmth came out of him i pray pride will not eat you up in jesus name and lastly let's come to terms that the plague of pride can cheaply be overcome by the spirit of humility as we all know that pride goes before a fall however the spirit of humility is summarily the spirit of god which is exclusively for the children of god as such i charge you to accept and to confess jesus today for the right spirit of humility to come upon you so that you can be exalted in due season Psalm chapter 25, from verse 9 down to 10. Of course, Psalm also, from verse 91, from verse 1 to 5, all of them speaking of how humility can take us up. Psalm 29, 9 to 10 said, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the part of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimony. So if you want to see his mercy, you want to see his covenant being fulfilled with testimonies in your life, allow him to teach you but you have to be humble first of course psalm 901 1 down to 5 said he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most i shall abide in the shadow of the almighty say i will say of the lord is my refuge my first stress in him will i trust surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noises pencilings he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and bubbler said in verse 5 Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flyeth by day. You can read Romans 1, 25, 32 at a later time. Galatians 3, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. If you truly want to say yes to Jesus, I'm going to bow your head and repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, I come to you this morning as a proud person. I've come to you as a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me all my pride. I confess you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. And I acknowledge you for every good thing that has happened in my life. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood and write my name in the book of life. Grant me a new heart, a heart of humility, humility for everything I've seen in my life. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We take two prayers. 
Father, by your mercies, deliver me from every plague of pride, ravaging my life in Jesus' name. Job 33, 17. With this understanding, let's pray, Father, by your mercies, deliver me from every plague of pride, ravaging my life and my future in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing me last prayer. Father, by your mercies, deliver your saints and your servant across Africa from every plague of pride, distorting the continent of Africa as a whole in Jesus' name. First John 2, 16, you can read that, Father, by your mercies, deliver our uh, saints, deliver your saints and your servant across Africa from every plague of pride, distorting the continent from progress in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing us, for in Jesus' name, pray. I pray that this end of this month will bring for you the fortune that God has packaged for you in Jesus' name. God bless you.